Hi again! To pick up where we left off in the previous vlog, uh, where we extracted the DNA from the four mushrooms, PCR'd them using the fungal barcoding primers, and then showed them on the gel, um, I'm going to now show you how to send them off for sequencing. So, I'm going to start by laying out my microcentrifuge tubes. There were six DNA extractions that were successful from those four samples. So I'm going to send off all six for sequencing, just to make sure that um, in the cases where both the dipstick and the hotshot method worked um, for the same sample, they come back with the same sequence and the same ID. Uh, so the way this works is that I will transfer the um, PCR product, so the green liquid that came out of the PCR machine, uh, into each of these tubes. And I will make sure that the barcode that I have from the sequencing facility and the label on the tube corresponds to the form that I'll show you how to fill out on the sequencing facility's website. So just for now, I'm going to add um, barcodes. It's a really neat system actually. So it just means that they scan these when they receive the samples and then that corresponds with the um, details that I've filled out in their system. And then I also send um, a primer to the facility as well, which are these purple barcodes. So I'm just going to take the next purple barcode and put that on the primer tube, which just indicates to them that it's not a sample. I've printed out the gel, um, which is what you saw in the camera at the end of the last vlog. I've just labelled it up for posterity um, and ticked the ones that produced bands. The printout isn't actually as good as the video recording and the photograph on my laptop. But thankfully I did it according to the laptop. So then I just label these tubes with the name of the fungus that we DNA extracted. Always helps to have a pen that works. And then fungus 10, which was the exciting dried one that I completely mispronounced, worked for the dipstick. Knowing that I was going to be sending these samples off for sequencing, I got the PCR products out of the freezer and let them defrost in the fridge, along with the primer, the forward primer that we used in the previous vlog for the PCR. Now I've moved up to my post PCR end of the table, if you can notice the different background, um, because as I said, I'm using the post PCR product, so it's good to keep that separate from the pre PCR end, just to avoid contamination. All I'm going to do is transfer the samples that I need into the tubes. And there we go. That's the tube containing the PCR amplicon. The sequencing facility do all the DNA purification and then uh, the Sanger sequencing using the primer that we send them. And then they just send us back the sequencing results. I forgot to say that when we send the primer to the sequencing facility, they like it in a concentration of 10 micromolar, whereas our stock solution is at 100. So all I'm going to do is make up a um, dilution in the primer tube. The sequencing barcodes handily come with a little label underneath that corresponds to the number on the barcoding. So it's a really good idea to just keep a record in your lab book of which barcode you stuck on which PCR amplicon with the sample name beside it and which primer you sent off to the facility to. So once all of my sample tubes and primers are labelled, I need to submit the order on the sequencing facility website. And then all I do is just assign the barcodes that I added to each tube. Um, and because I use the next in the order, it's quite simple. I just select those barcodes from the drop down menu. And then I'm going to add in the sample name. So it's fungus 7H for hot shot. 
Fungus 7D Primer Barcode. Let's do this. Excellent. I like it when a plan comes together. ETS 1F. Super. Just to confirm that I've sent the primer at the right concentration. And now I just need to print that form to include with the tubes. Now that I'm ready to send my samples to the sequencing facility, I'm going to just label a normal envelope up with the address that's written on the form that I just printed out. I don't have any double, um, sorry, large letter stamps at the moment. So I'm going to put two first class stamps on there to make sure that they arrive okay. Fold up the paperwork that I printed off earlier from the order. And then just make sure that the lids are on all of those tubes and just pop them in there too. And seal that down. All right, getting these in just in time for the last post today. Just received an email to say that my samples have arrived at the sequencing facility. So we should have our answer soon. Woohoo! Sequencing results are back! Um, I did already have a little sneak preview at these um, and they're not as bad as all that red makes them look. <laughs> Ideally we'd like not to have the red on the quality scores but um, that's the way it goes sometimes. But when you have a look at the seq files there are still usable sequences. So I'm going to work with them just to show you what um, you do with those sequences and to give, tell you what the mushrooms are that we extracted the DNA from, which is really quite exciting, I think. Uh, so just to talk you through this really quickly, uh, we had two DNA extractions that amplified for fungus seven. Uh, so I've just taken the uh, sequence from the dipstick extraction. When you click that, that's what you get. You want to ignore all of these ends at the beginning and at the end because that always happens and just highlight the best bit of the sequence in the middle. Copy that and then you just go on to the Unite Fungal Database website. I don't know which one's already in there. Paste in your sequence and submit that. And here's one I prepared earlier. So Fungus 7 blasts against the Unite fungal database and the highest hits are for Milan Milano Luca or Lusa. Oh, my pronunciation is so bad. So as a um, good sanity check, I just popped that into Google and uh, saw what that looked like. And I would say that's a pretty good um, like likeness to the mushroom that I picked from my neighbor's garden and that I showed you on the camera in the previous vlog. So I'm pretty happy that what I picked and extracted was a Milano Luca. Oh dear. So I then went back and did the same for, okay, fungus eight, unfortunately didn't work. So we'll never know what that slightly smaller round version of the fungus was. Um, but fungus nine, did work for both extractions. So I'm going to take the one with the best quality score, which is this. Same again, just highlight and copy the best bit of the sequence, which actually for this one is pretty good. I think it's all the way through to there without too many ends in, which is means the base pair didn't sequence properly. And then you put it into Unite again. And here's one I prepared earlier. So this is the one that I recognise, Fungus 9, if you remember from the vlog. It was the shaggy ink cap. So it came up on um, Unite as Coprinus Comatus. And then I just did a little Google. And there we have it, shaggy ink cap. So good to know that I can actually identify a mushroom, even if it is the most, uh, I would say, iconic one. Um, then... The moment of truth, we got a pretty good uh, long sequence from Fungus 10, which is the exciting, potentially rare 
dried mushroom that Paul sent. Um, so again, I put that into the blast function on the database and it did indeed come back as a lessonum. And you can see the suspected ID, which was lessonum albo stipitatum, um, which is rather exciting. So I think that was correctly ID'd, which uh, hopefully means it's something quite rare and of interest to the mycologists. Uh, so I've sent that off already, the sequence to them to have a closer look at. And I just, out of interest, had a little Google and this is what it looked like before it was dehydrated and sent to me. So quite a striking little mushroom, actually. So yes, very cool indeed. Over the course of those two vlogs, I've shown you how to extract DNA from mushrooms, um, put them through our fungal DNA barcoding PCR, and then to send those uh, PCR amplicons off for sequencing, and then to get those sequencing results back and find out what those mushrooms were. I think a really cool pipeline, and I'm hoping you'll agree, and more of you will uh, want to try it yourselves using your own molecular biology at home setup. Once again, thanks for listening.